But unfortunately, all of that kind of fun and joy was cut short when I logged onto the internet. When I checked social media and I saw reports, super, super early reports, I think from, I'm going to say the reports might have been from like Boosie and somebody else quickly saying that, oh yeah, um, they're hearing through the grapevine that Richard McQuan has passed away, allegedly from an OD. Allegedly, the, it was the bad pill narrative already has spread before it was even confirmed. Then a bunch of other pages, which I follow, especially at the Fugger Daily page, I think they were initially saying, yeah, we've heard the same thing, but hoping it's not true. And then a few other people that are reputable saying, yeah, we heard the same thing, but it's not been confirmed. So I had some slight hope that maybe it was some like, you know, lost, it was some like unconfirmed reports. Maybe people kind of jumped the gun because it wanted to be first. And in that instance, I'm okay for them to clarify and say, hey, it's not true. But unfortunately, a few hours or a few minutes later, not even a few hours later, a few minutes later, the news was confirmed that unfortunately Rich Homie Kwan passed away today. Really, really, in my opinion, tragic news. Um, if you were listening to hip hop around, what, 2008 to 2017, 18, this guy was, <sighs> this guy, this guy, this guy was really, really, really pivotal in that scene. Like, he made some great music. He was part of an amazing, very short-lived um, duo with him and Young Fug um, called Rich Gang and obviously um, Birdman. But in general, like, he made so... He was a part of so many amazing moments during that time. 2000, I'm going to say 2008 to 2019. Those are the times when he really flipping killed it with the melodies, with the bars, with the hooks, with the beat selection, just an incredible all around artist. And for me, it was just a voice, you know, because I'm a big stickler. I'm one of these weird rap fans that if I hear a rapper that I no, if I hear somebody, I need to make sure that I like their voice. And Rich Homie Kwan has such a distinctive, guttural, deep, you know, raspy voice. And the way he would like bounce on the beat, it just got me going. Like I didn't even need to hear, I didn't even need to understand what he was saying. Because sometimes I didn't understand what you're saying. And I'd be just mumbling through the records. But just the, the the way that he'll be bouncing on these tunes, the way his voice would kind of just perfectly align whatever production that he was on. Honestly, it was impossible not to like him. It was impossible not to be a fan of the stuff that he did. And um, yeah, man, responsible for a lot of great songs. And I have to be honest, man, like, yes, his solo career was amazing. He put out a lot of great songs by himself. Um, I think there was one, what was it? Was it Flex? That was really popular that everyone liked. Um, he did a really good song with um, YG. I remember as well, that was banging. There was one with Tiger that was really good. Um, but the feature that I remember coming back to a lot was definitely the feature he did with um, Travis Scott. I think I posted actually on my Twitter before I started the stream. So if you know my Twitter, you can check it out. There. I posted a clip from there. But that feature from the Travis... I forgot what album that might have been. That might have been Days Before Rodeo. I think that was Days Before Rodeo. It's a Travis Scott feature featuring Young Fug. And I think he's got like four verses on there. Like he comes on four different times. And I don't know the story behind the track. I wish... I probably would start digging and finding out how it happened. But I hope the story of that track is what we can hear in that Travis Scott reached out to to Young Fug and Rich Homie Kwan, told him to jump on this track and they jumped on the track but Rich Homie Kwan spazzed out so much Travis told him, hey, just run with it, go. He just didn't tell him to stop. And this is back in the day when Travis, now Travis is a lot more of a solo artist, he's more of a singular artist, he wants to kind of be in the limelight. But back in the day, Travis Scott was more like following the Kanye footsteps of being a producer like I'm going to get the best people on the song and I'm going to let them do what they do best if that means I don't have a verse I don't care now I think he'll be a little bit choosy but back then he was like that so that's what made him so special Travis so I have a feeling he got them in the studio and he was like you know what you are going so crazy I'm going to let you just run with it and honestly the song stops but you feel like Rich Homie Kwan could have went on for another 32 bars if he wanted to he could have gone on for another 32 he could have gone on for another minute and a half another two minutes the way he ended that record like it's just it always gets me going so um that's one of my favorite records of all time i swear to god i think i've played that a million times and obviously you know we all know the flipping records that he done on rich gang that mixtape is just too much you know lifestyle is legitimately lifestyle might be 
lifestyle with Richomi Kwan and Young Thug might be the blueprint to a lot of people's actual lifestyle, myself included. Right? The jewelry, the clothes, just it, it and it wasn't it, you have to remember back then as well it wasn't even with those guys it wasn't even about the clothes really it's not even now with future like all these type of guys like they've got a special place in our heart because it's just the it's the aura it's the swag which a lot of these people don't even have and you have to think about it rich Kwan, rich homie kwan was well regarded but he wasn't at the top 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 as he probably should have been especially when you think of his talent as like amigos or something he was there but he was not really at the top 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 so that was that was what the talent was back then. Nowadays, I don't even think there's there's a person out now from Atlanta who probably touches Rich Romy Kwan's talent, especially nowadays with the new kids. He was so like he was battling amongst like the young the young you know young folk coming up, which is obviously a phenom. Travis Scott was doing his thing. Like there was so much talent happening at that particular time, and he was just one of many. But his voice still stood out. He was still able to kind of pierce through. And obviously, it's really sad how it ended. Because him and obviously Young Thug had a falling out, you know, loads of very um, s sketchy and deep and real street stuff attached to that. And there's no point even going into that too much. But it did seem like he was trying to make amends. He was trying to come back into the limelight. And because of his talent, really, even though he kind of dropped out of the limelight and some records didn't work, label, all this sort of madness, probably deep down he knew he would have another time in the sun because the talent's just undeniable. But, you know father time not father time but time is never guaranteed you never know you never know what's gonna happen tomorrow so um it's just unfortunate he was never able to kind of get back on the horse you know you know it was just unfortunate that he was never able to get back on the horse and just enjoy like a second win the second season out there in the sun because i think he deserved it his talent was of a level where he could easily have done it again because he you know he writes records in his sleep um i'm probably sure he was probably writing a lot of verses and tunes for people anyway when he was um, still about and stuff, but it's just a shame, really, because he was coming out, he was appearing on streams and shit, and he was really starting to pop back out again. It seemed like, especially with Fug in jail at the moment, they were going, they were trying to make amends behind the scenes, you'd imagine. Um, but it just, you know, time kind of ran out, unfortunately, for him. And um, it's just really sad, man. It's just really fucking sad because the guy is just like, you, you forget, just now I've been listening back to a lot of his discography, and I was like, fuck, bro. I remember a lot of these tunes bar for bar. Like, <laughs> I remember playing a lot of these songs in my sets. Like, I'd be playing legit techno sets in clubs and shit. And I'd just whack on lifestyle mid-set. Fuck it. You know what I mean? I want to listen to this in the system. I want to hear this on this sound system right now. I'll just be playing it. So it's like, it's a real shame that he's passed away. It really is because I would have loved to have seen him be able to have another swing at the things and be able to kind of show people his talent and remind people while well, one. But we still have his music. You know, the great thing about being an artist is that despite you passing early, you still have your music and your art lives forever. So people can always kind of honor you and kind of celebrate your life and shit. But yeah, man. Um, R.I.P. to Rich Homie Kwan, dead at 34, gone but never forgotten. An absolute fucking legend. Legitimately, an absolute certified fucking legend. And I'm swear I'm going to be playing Mama Sita, Rich Gang, the mixtape all the way through all the way through man all the way through all the way through this entire week i swear to god like absolute legend man it's so 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 sad like honestly honestly is because i was already heartbroken when rich gang broke up because i wanted the tape number two i wanted the tape number three i wanted them to like go on and do great things because the chemistry between fug and fucking rich Omi kwan was just magical like you can't make that shit up and it looked like it was never going to happen, especially once we all found out what the real reason why it is that they broke up. And if you want to know, you can find out. There's loads of YouTube videos about it. We're not going to speak about that right now. But when I found out the real reason, I was like, oh, God almighty, man. This, they're never, ever going to work together again, are they? And then Fug gets locked up and there's some, like, you know, it feels like maybe Rich Homie Kwan came on a few interviews and basically intimated that he did a bit, you know, he might have been in the wrong in some places. There might be some, you know, you might be able to reconcile things and you're hoping maybe that would be the case but unfortunately that hasn't happened so i don't know i don't know man and prayers to young fuck by the way prayers to young fuck imagine being young fuck right now you're legitimately fighting for your life fighting for your freedom legitimately right now and while you've been locked up lil Keed has passed away and so has rich homie kwan Little Keed and Rich Homie Kwan both have passed away in the time that Young Fug has been sitting in prison awaiting, you know, 
the conclusion of his long, long trial. <sighs> I can't imagine what it must be like to receive that sort of news in prison. Could you imagine receiving that kind of news in prison? Yeah. R.I.P. Richard Mikwan, gone but never forgotten, an absolute legend. I swear to God. Um, yeah, man. R.I.P. Richard Mikwan, gone but never forgotten, man. Gone but never forgotten. Absolute incredible talent. And um, just a shame, really, isn't it? It's... I don't know, man. It's just, it's just a shame that we always lose We always lose the good ones, you know? We always lose the fucking talented ones early. All the dead ones that no one wants, that are just wasting fucking bandwidth, wasting storage space, wasting studio time. They they hang around forever. But the ones who are actually talented, who have something to say, the ones who are actually going to inspire a whole generation of artists and people in general, they, you know what I mean? They always have to pass away early. And it's like, God, man. And even allegedly, they're saying, um, "Yeah, exactly." Uh, big up Stephen Casaneda. You said it, not me. You said it, not me. And just, I feel, and I feel so, I feel so sorry for you guys in America, man. Allegedly, they're saying it's a, it was a dodgy pill. Like it must be, it must be really, really risky. It must be like a. It must be a roller dice thing for you guys in America with drugs. Because the the amount of dodgy stuff you have over there, especially, I'm, I'm assuming it's the fentanyl shit, mostly, if they're saying it's a dodgy pill. Like, it's just such a big problem there. We don't, we're lucky we don't have it in the, in the Europe, in Europe, you know, not the same level you do. I'm sure we do, but not to the same level. We're so lucky we don't have it in Europe and the UK. Because the way we take drugs here, if we had the same issue you guys have with like tainted drugs or contaminated drugs or spike drugs, whatever, or shitty drugs, we would be fucked. We would be, people would be dropping like flies. If we, us in the UK had the same issues you guys are having with fucked up drugs and shit, we would be dying by the million. I swear to God, like I can't even imagine how scary it must be in the States to like rack up a line to take a pill you have no idea if that's going to be your first or your last you know of the, yeah, you don't know you really don't know if that's going to be the day that you pass away like oh yeah yeah and you could imagine too someone like him like you know the pills probably were like a way to soothe the pain you know what i mean you're going through what you're going through your career isn't where you want it to be you're trying to manage that and then here you are you know what i mean taking the pills to try and soothe that pain and to try and manage the situation you're in and make it better and then hey look what it does it takes you out <sighs> yeah exactly big up Uche in the shirt even if I went to relapse I'm too scared of contamination man yeah I don't blame you I don't blame you Uche man there's so many times I think about like you know what's her name what's that comedian um, that I wanted to interview the blonde lady I think of, I don't know why but many a times maybe because of the times I'm racking up for some reason, I'll just sit there and think of Kate Quigley. And I'll be like, imagine the survivor's guilt if you're Kate Quigley. You're on a night out with you, your boyfriend, of other friend, I think. You buy you buy, a, you buy a little eight ball. You're in your Airbnb playing some tunes. You're racking up on the table. You do your line. You go to sleep. You wake up in the morning and three of your friends are dead, but you're still alive. <sighs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine a survivor's guilt if you're Kate Quigley? How that must feel? Contaminated cocaine. You took it, you're fine. Your three other friends are gone. I think her boyfriend at the time, some black guy, a white dude, and I think a woman. I think so. I think there's three people there. RIP to those victims. And they were happening. Just some nice adult fun. Nice adult fun. Whatever. And look what it did. It cost them their lives. So... I could understand there's some people probably over there in the States who are probably sober, not even by choice, but because they're just afraid of dying. You know, they don't even want to, they don't want to risk it. Like, look, I have nothing against drugs. I just would rather not do them. I just rather enjoy my drink. And I guess, to be fair, if, if, you're, in, if you're in America, you probably got way worse. You probably got more of a reason not to do it because you've got fucking, you know, legal weed as well. So I think if weed was legal in here in the UK, I think a lot of people wouldn't also do, you know, class A's and shit. Um, that'd probably help you know what I mean but yeah man R.I.P. 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 Um, gone but never forgotten R.I.P. to the one and only rich homie Kwan I swear to God man god damn 
Oh, RIP to um, what's that? Squee, Squeegee two one six. Brother got killed with Fent three years ago. RIP to your brother, man. That's a fucking horrible way to go out. RIP to your brother, man. And praise and strength to you, my guy. Exactly, Eduardo. Trees, exactly. It, honestly, if trees, if trees were legal in the UK, I swear to God, a lot of people here would probably take them and lay off the class A's because the class A's are just. It's so risky. It's so risky, bro. Young old vibes. I know someone whose niece died here in Chicago, in Michigan, the first time she smoked weed because it was. Oh my God! No way! No way! The first time she smoked weed because it was lace. Oh, God Almighty! God Almighty! <sighs> Could you imagine that pain? The first time you ever took a pull on a zoo and yeah i couldn't man i repeat everybody out there man i repeat everybody who passes away off the hands of fenton and shit these dealers need to fucking fix up and stop lacing their shit with fent and just yeah um force and feelings got to richard mcquart and his friends and family man i can't imagine what they're going through right now man especially someone like that is so young he's probably the breadwinner for an entire family like that sort of stuff just crushes and destroys like I just hope they stick together, man, honestly. R.I.P. R.I.P. to Rich Homie Kwan. R.I.P. to Rich Homie Kwan. Gone but never forgotten. And of course, my song of the day at the end of the pod will be Mama Sita. You know how it is. So if you're listening to my voice right now and you can hear me and you've got a fucking music player next to you, just play play, play a bit of Rich Homie Kwan tonight. Do you know what I mean? Um, play a bit of Rich Homie Kwan. Play a bit of Rich Homie Kwan. <laughs> 